morning people, I'm at the Labour Party conference here in Liverpool and because I know that when you finish watching this video you're going to have plenty of reasons to not want to trust the Labour Party, I want to make one thing really really clear. This country cannot survive another five years of the Tories. So even if you can't bring yourself to vote for Labour, make sure you goddamn vote. I don't care who for. The question I'm asking today is, is the Labour Party a democratic party? I'm going to say this simply. In the UK, in almost every single election, a party with a minority of the vote gets a majority of the seats in Parliament, so they can do whatever they want without having to even consult the other parties, you know, the parties that the majority of people actually voted for. So the majority of votes in the UK mean literally nothing, they have no effect on UK policy. So in my personal opinion, if the majority of votes in a country never mean a goddamn thing, that country is not a democratic country. And any party that continues to support that voting system is not a democratic party. And the majority of people in the UK recognise that, with the majority supporting a proportional system of voting. And the members of the Labour Party know that too, with over 80% supporting switching to a voting system where the seats in Parliament match the votes of the people. And yet here's what happened when I tried to confront Lisa Nandy, a member of Labour's shadow cabinet, about that. Uh, Femi, I uh, just wanted to know we've got, we've got a your, 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 view, your views on PR, proportional representation, given that the party has voted for P proportional, proportional representation, what are your views? I'm really sorry, I've got We've got a meeting we've got to get to. Sorry. Do you support PR, proportional representation? Yes or no? There's a, there's a debate to be had, but we can't have it now because we've got 30 seconds to run to a meeting. Well, so uh, we can't, we, you're out of breath, we're the, out of the, breath. The party is not, run to a meeting, the party mate. is 80% in favour of proportional representation. It's a yes or no. Do you support changing the voting system at the very least? If it was something we could, we could do when we're not out of breath, we'd be happy to at, do it. At the very least, yes or no? Real democracy in the UK. Miss Nandy, please. Now, you remember when I tried to interview those Tory MPs asking basic questions and they all fobbed me off? Well, Lisa Nandy doing the same thing, it's giving Tory. Fortunately, the next person who I bumped into was John McDonnell. Now, while I may have had different views to him on Brexit, one of the beauties of a proportional system is that people who have different views on some things can work together in the areas where they have common ground. Because it's not a winner takes all where one party controls everything. And one area where I strongly agree with John McDonnell is the need to ditch the first past the post voting system. Mr. McDonnell, uh, uh, last year the party voted overwhelmingly in favour of proportional representation. Yeah. It's now the state of uh, NEC policy that uh, first past the post damages public trust. Uh, what do you think we need to do in order to make that a reality when the Labour okay. government comes in? The next stage of the Labour Party process is now we've got our programme. Mm -hmm. The next stage is what they call the Clause 5 meeting, mm -hmm. where the NEC, mm -hmm. the Shadow Cabinet and the Affiliated Trade Unions and Organisations come together mm -hmm. and they go through the draft of the manifesto. So that will come later, mm -hmm. just before the election. So between now and then, mm -hmm. we've got to make sure those people attending the Clause 5 meeting realise this is a priority to be inserted in a clear commitment within the manifesto. Perfect. I think we can, I think we can, but we need to, it's the next stage of the campaign. Then there's Jess Phillips, fellow Brummie, so usually I get on with her, but this is probably the most heated debate we've had. I, I, I agree, the system needs changing, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I we, there needs to be a huge amount of work that's done on exactly what that change to our democracy is because I don't want to be a Labour MP, I want to be the Labour MP for Birmingham Yardley mm -hmm. uh, and there has to be the, the golden, absolute golden thing about our democracy that doesn't exist in other democracies in the world. And well let me just come in there because pointing out how unique our voting system is isn't quite the flex she thinks it is given that the only other country that even partially uses our voting system is Belarus, often referred to as Europe's last dictatorship. But carry on. We give it away at our peril is the link between a constituency member of parliament and their constituents. So, so, I, so I've, I've heard this constituency link argument before, but the problem is, given that the major, in the majority of elections, well, in pretty much every election, a party with the minority of the vote gets a majority of the seats and they can pass any law they like without having to even consult the other parties, that means that most votes literally have no effect on UK policy. So that constituency link is meaningless if the majority is It's people. not meaningless to me, mate. It's not meaning to, meaningless because, to my because, constituents. Because you won. Because you won. No, well... Because you won. But, yeah, the, but the, in the majority of cases, people don't see the... So the you vote. have got to find a system where your system meets my system. What about a regional system? For example, if the West Midlands had, say, 5, 10 MPs, and you would still be representing that area, but it, you would at least have a proportional representation based on the percentage of the votes that your party gets. So you would have that local link, but at least it would be reflective of people. Wouldn't that mean... No, that the West Midlands isn't an identity like that, you're, the way you are saying it. I'm just saying I'm not against what... But you, you, you can't come up with it walking along here like on the back of a fuck packet. My constituents can come in and see me. I'm not giving it up. <laughs> 
I don't want to do Even the job Even if it means the majority of people's votes don't count. Even if it means the majority no, no, of people no, across no. the UK. Okay, so come up with it. let's come up with a solution where but you can have both. I don't want to pick. Now the problem we've got here is if you want to make everybody's vote count equally, you need a proportional system whereby you split up the number of seats based on the percentage of the votes that each party gets. Whereas under our current system, whichever MP comes first in your constituency just wins, even if they only get a minority of the vote. And the rest of the vote simply don't count. But it does mean that everybody in that constituency has one MP that they go to with their policy issues. So when Jess challenged me to come up with some sort of best of both worlds, I suggested having bigger constituencies like the West Midlands instead of just Yardley so that all the MP seats in that area would be split up proportionally based on each party's vote share. But she rejected the idea of having larger constituencies saying that the West Midlands doesn't have a single identity. So what she's asking for is ludicrous because having several MPs in constituencies the size of hers would lead to having tens of thousands of MPs across the country. So what it boils down to is she likes having her constituents being able to turn to her even if the majority of people in the country don't have anybody in Parliament that they actually voted for. Now the next member of Labour's cabinet was Ed Miliband and after a minute of him refusing to talk to me and having his aides run interference, he eventually realised that just like with Lisa Nandy, him not talking to me was making him look worse. The party is in favour of proportional representation, the majority of the country is in favour of proportional representation. Would you support them? Would you support the views of the people? Really would, you support giving, would, you support, would you support giving the people an actual say on their democracy, given that the majority of, in almost every single election, the, a, a party of the minority of the vote gets a majority of the seats in Parliament, meaning that most votes actually don't mean a thing to policy. Well, look, Would you support changing we've that? We've set out in our National Policy Forum our like position on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the issues with first past the post, but, but honestly, this election is not for us about reforming our electoral system. This election is about political change so that we can actually turn around the problems of this country. Now that's the line that you're going to hear a lot from Labour when it comes to changing the voting system, that it's not a priority for the people. Jess Phillips even tried that shit too. You say the majority of the public, I have to say no one ever brings it up with me, but anyway. She's trying to argue that people care more about the cost of living crisis than changing the voting system. But in Keir Starmer's speech today, he showed that he knows that those two things are inextricably linked. And if we want to challenge the hoarding of potential in our economy, then we must win the war against the hoarders in Westminster. Give power back and put communities in control. He knows that the majority of people in the UK support taxing the rich more to help the poor, and yet we're being run by a government that brags about defunding poor areas to help rich ones. So he's acutely aware of the fact that changing the voting system is key to helping people with the cost of living crisis. And yet he refuses to do it. The majority of people in the UK have voted for parties to the left of the Conservatives in almost every single election since World War II. And yet the Tories have been in power for 48 of the last 78 years. Our voting system is keeping poor people poor. The Labour Party knows that and is refusing to do anything about it. Why? Because they care more about gaining absolute power in a winner-takes-all voting system than actually making sure that the progressive majority of people in the UK are actually reflected in Parliament. They are literally choosing power over the people, so when they take power, it is our job to expose them as the anti-democratic, power-hungry despots that they actually are. I'm Femi, this has been F Politics, just trying to make sure that politics doesn't F you. Have a great week.